Welcome back to Skeleton Bushcraft and Survival. Glad you could join us. Want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about primitive traps. Now, the trap that I'm going to set up is well known. It's nothing special, but it does work. And so we're going to do that. I'm going to show you how to make one, set it up, and different things to look for when you're getting ready to trap. So it's going to be kind of a walkthrough, if you will. Well, I'm really excited about doing it. So uh, you ready? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's get on with it. What kind of tree is this? A red oak. Good job. And what kind of nut does a red oak make? Acorn. Good job. Good job. Red oaks produce acorns. Squirrels love acorns. So when you're out tramping, you want a squirrel. Red oak is definitely a, one that you would look for. Another tree that you want to look for is elm. If you got a dead elm, this is laying down like this right here. Not so much on a dead elm. But we've got elms around here that are alive. Squirrels like them. Maples, squirrels like them. Right over here, in fact, probably in the, come on little buddy. Right over here, this is a maple, right here. This is a maple tree. And then over here, this is a hickory. And as you see, right back there, it's more hickory. Now what kind of nut does a hickory nut produce? <laughs> what kind of nut does a hickory tree produce? A hickory nut. Good job, he was paying attention. Squirrels love those. You get around these, be real quiet. When you're going in to get ready to set up for traps, we're being loud right now because this is kind of a tutorial and things, but uh, you want to be quiet and you don't want to disturb any of the natural surroundings. You want to get in, set your traps and get out. But I'm just showing the areas that you would want to be in for setting up the traps. You also want to look at game trails. You want to look down on the ground and see if there's any nuts, broken apart, chips or anything. Because that means that they're active in that area. That's where you'd want to set your traps. So, that's that. Let's go ahead and start on the traps.
All right, here it is, all the components that we need, uh, minus the cordage, of course. It's an easy construction. I've wrapped this right here together. You've seen that I made a half lap on there. It just makes it a more solid construction. These go into the ground, and this is stationary. This part right here has to be long enough and big enough to hold the weight of the, uh, the limb or whatever you're wanting to use for the engine. Um, if it's not strong enough, the, the spring and the engine will pull it right back out of the ground. So this has got to be long enough and big enough to get a good grip in the ground to hold that weight. Once that's said and done with, set this right back down there. You need one that goes in front. Now this stake will go in front of it, and this is the bait stick. This, correlating with this, will determine how far away this needs to be. I like to find one that has a little nubbin right there. It helps lock it in. I'll show a demonstration once it's all said and done with, but it's very easy construction. Let's just go over there and put it together. Well, we got our traps uh, components set up, and as he's demonstrating right there, we found an engine. Now, the first thing that you want to look at when you're finding the engine is number one, a tree that has a lot of spring to it, and number two, anything that's up top that might give it resistance you want to cut off. That way it has no resistance and it springs the way that the engine should. Now, what I like to do is bring this down and use a clove hitch up there. A clove hitch with box knot and secure that. You want to use the entire cordage all the way down, tying to the release stick and then using the other part of that same cordage for the snare. It's a lot stronger that way. If you do it in two halves, it can cause problems. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and hammer those in the ground and everything. And I'll show you how it looks like when it's all said and done with before we set it off. Also, I mentioned in earlier videos about using a spoon knife in traps. And I said that I could do a demonstration and it just never happened. And I apologize about that. Uh, the person that asked for it, and he said that he would really like to see that, and I hope that he watches this video, and he'll see it. A spoon knife is not just for cutting out spoons. You can use it for other things too. And in earlier videos with Lily, Lily in the Wild, I demonstrated how to use a spoon knife to make a square joint, a square hole. So anyways, we'll go ahead and set this up, and I'll show it to you, and then we'll continue. On our way here, I was pointing out different things, different foods that they're eating. They love hickory nuts. They love acorns. They love beech nuts. These are things that they normally have here in the woods. So when you're baiting a trap, you want to use things that they're normally used to seeing. So we actually have a hickory nut that we're going to use. And we're going to give a few more, pile it around up underneath and so on and so forth. Make it a, a good old meal for them. But anyways... The bait stick, it's kind of hard to balance a hickory nut right on the top. So that's the reason why we want to use a spoon knife. Now if we use a spoon knife, we can gnaw ourselves in a little bowl. To everyone watching, that's my son messaging me. <laughs> my oldest son, not him. <laughs> uh, I hope you heard that. That was funny. He whispers to me, he says, they know what you mean. <laughs> no, I think they know what you mean. That's what I said. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Now, using a regular knife, trying to carve this in, it's kind of hard to make a bowl shape. And the bowl shape is exactly what we're wanting in order to hold the nut. Now, the nut on top, just as soon as I grab it, it's going to fall off. And that's fine. We just want it above there so that they can see it. It's not going to trigger the trap either. We don't want it that sensitive. We want it just so that they have to get in there and feel comfortable and their body is what actually moves the trap and sets it off. I'm shaking all over the place, but it's sitting still. And that's what we want. So, now we're going to go ahead and set the trap, set everything up and, and show how it's going to look, and then we'll set it off for you. All right, so you see we got to set it up and everything. Got that looped over nice and neat. Now, like I said, the actual nut on top is just to entice. It's, it, it's not meant to be the trigger. If they knock that off there, we don't want it that sensitive. We want it to where they eat that and then they start going up underneath to get another nut. And that's when the body itself moves the bait stick out of the way and gets them. And that's the idea of it. If it is too sensitive, then the wind blows and knocks that off and triggers a trap. And then you, you, you didn't catch anything besides wind. So you don't want it extremely sensitive, but you don't want it to the point where they have to actually pounce on it in order to trigger it. You want it kind of happy, happy medium. So I'm getting ready to now set or trigger the trap and let you see how it's going to, you know, behave. So let me go ahead and get a stick and do that. Well, as you see here, we got everything set up and everything. Now, this little notch here to hold this nut here, like I said, it's not meant for it to go off when the squirrel knocks this off. We don't want it that sensitive. So, squirrel comes up, grabs this off here, gets to it, eats it, comes in here, gets more. The body, the body is what we want setting this off. Here's a snare right here. We want a good, clean snare. So the body comes in here and nudges up against this right here, trying to get to this. See how I'm nudging? Nothing's happening. It goes in, and there you go. <clears throat> it's caught. And that right there is the walkthrough demonstration of how to set up a trap and what to look for along the way to get the trap set. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, like, share, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. <laughs> My son wants to be in it. You want to say bye? <laughs> all right. I'll see you on the next one. Like I said, nature. It does provide.